We're back as promised, Entrepreneurship Tuesday on Why in the Morning. I'm your host, Barry Moses, or it's by Mon every social media platform, and this is our last interview of the day. So I've, I saved the best for last. And uh, if you've been wondering on how to spend your money or how to invest your money, this one is for financial literacy. And I have the main man himself, Mr. Michael Obaga, who's uh, an asset man management uh, specialist, a banking and insurance uh, specialist, and uh, the list goes was on so I'm, let, I'm going to let him introduce himself uh, so we can carry on Karibu sana. thanks Barry thanks for having me all right your camera is number four right there uh, the list your your credentials are pre picturesque I can't list everything so yeah. I'm going to give you an opportunity uh, to, to say it yeah my uh -huh. name is Michael and mm -hmm. uh, uh, my name is Michael Obaga and I work for Cyton Investments. Mm -hmm. However, looking at my bio, I have uh, a career arc of uh, mm -hmm. about 10 years mm -hmm. in uh, private wealth advisory. And you're looking at uh, relationship management in banking, insurance and asset management. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a brief, uh, you know, experience in the pension world as well. Mm -hmm. Therefore, that one ideally captures the financial sector across board. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we have great facility of experience and mm -hmm. advisory when it comes to financial matters. All right. Especially when you're talking about the young people uh -huh. and investments. Which is our audience uh, for that matter. And I'm so glad to have you as a young person as well who understands uh, this. I'd like to get uh, your background first. Uh, uh, what is your background? How did you get to this point of knowing so much about uh, the financial market? Uh, I remember immediately after college, I graduated from uh, Jomo Kenyatta University. Mm -hmm. I immediately got a job uh, in a circle, mm -hmm. which was actually a building society. I remember you're we dealing with farmers. Uh -huh. You're going down into the villages to pay farmers uh -huh. who had uh, cultivated tea, coffee, and mm -hmm. all that. So I worked my first job uh, into the financial industry. I was introduced uh, by a circle. Mm -hmm. Later on, uh, as a What were you studying at, at Jomo Kenyatta? At Jomo Kenyatta, mm -hmm. I studied applied mathematics. Mm -hmm. Uh, however, you know, the current uh, economic uh, status of Kenya, uh -huh. you have to be well uh, versed to work in any uh -huh. industry mm -hmm. where fate will land you. Mm -hmm. And I remember immediately after graduation, I said, I'm not going to hold back to wait for a career mm -hmm. in, in mathematics. Mm -hmm. Rather, I'll take any job that, come, that will come by. But I'm told uh, the financial markets or the industry is hungry for for guys with the knowledge in mathematics. Exactly. Uh -huh. So it came in as an extra extra advantage, mm -hmm. especially now that I was good in math. Uh -huh. uh, therefore, I placed myself in a very strategic position mm -hmm. by taking up these duties, uh, especially in the financial industry. All right. Thank you very much for coming. Yeah. And um, uh, my first question uh, is going to be about this a financial literacy thing. Uh, people have been complaining about it, uh, it being uh, included in our curriculum or parents teaching their kids this thing. Uh, so everybody's pointing a finger. I I'd like to know, uh, the first class of grammar is learning the alphabet. Yeah. The first class of mathematics is learning the, the, the numerals, the numbers yeah. themselves. Uh, what is the first lesson uh, when you would like to teach something, somebody a little bit about financial literacy? Yeah, for young people mm. and for everyone, mm -hmm. uh, the story has been the same. Whenever mm. you want to have sound, you know, you know, usage of your finances, you want to have a prudent, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, usage of your finances, we've always proposed that you embrace the 50, 30, 20 rule, mm -hmm. whereby you're committing 50% of your income after tax mm -hmm. into paying your needs mm -hmm. and obligations. Mm -hmm. And 30% of those funds, mm -hmm. you can commit them into paying your wants and mm -hmm. you can be able to purchase whatever you need, whatever mm -hmm. is in fashion, mm -hmm. whatever electronic has come. Only 30%, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And only the remaining 20% mm -hmm. will go towards your savings and investments, mm -hmm. including payment of debt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the eighty, the fifty, thirty, twenty rule yeah. uh, could be the first uh, step towards financial freedom. It is for uh, our young people. And you know, this rule was uh, created by a lady author, politician, and uh, investment guru called uh, Elizabeth Warren. Mm -hmm. She's a contender for the U.S. Uh, presidential elections mm -hmm. and uh, on a Democratic Party ticket. Mm -hmm. uh, Elizabeth Warren came up with this fifty, thirty, twenty rule. Mm -hmm. um, in a book, mm -hmm. or all my wealth, and mm -hmm. it's uh, and the book clearly says that fifty percent mm -hmm. of whatever you get after taxes mm -hmm. of your income after taxes should go towards payment of your needs and mm -hmm. obligations. Thirty percent 
goes into your wants mm -hmm. and uh, 20 percent must go into savings uh -huh. or investments uh -huh. or payment of debts all right i'm interested in this 20 percent yeah this 20 percent that you're going to put aside yeah uh, this is your hard earned money and you don't want to play with it yeah. uh, so uh what are some of the options we have as young people where do i put this 20 percent now the, the, no the matter 20, how small yeah mm -hmm. the 20 percent is uh so crucial. Mm -hmm. Actually, when you look closely at that uh, ratio, you can easily say it's an 80-20 rule, uh -huh. which has been broken down to 50-30-20. Mm -hmm. So 80%, you can just do away with the 80% to say, I don't want to spend more money in my mm -hmm. wants. Let me commit this 30% into my needs and obligations, considering mm -hmm. maybe you have more needs, you have more obligations and responsibilities. So the remaining 20 is so vital, mm -hmm. so crucial, but so little as well, but so important mm -hmm. in the sense that it goes towards payment of your debts, mm -hmm. it goes towards your savings mm -hmm. or investments. Mm -hmm. And again, that one gives us another question. What is the difference between savings and investments? Uh, when one saves, you're simply putting money for future mm -hmm. use. For you're rainy putting, day. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're putting your money aside mm -hmm. for future use. Mm -hmm. But now for investments, you're putting your money aside mm -hmm for productive use. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we again as investment advisors, uh -huh. we encourage people to invest in rather than saving. rather than save. Yeah. All right. Uh, when you talk uh, when you talk investment, we are assuming capital is required yeah. and uh, at least we need to save some money mm -hmm. uh, to, to, to achieve or to raise that capital. Mm -hmm. Or can you just start investing with the 20% immediately you start earning your salary? Yeah, exactly. The sooner the better. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Barry, we've always said that you can invest in any vehicle that suits your pocket. Mm -hmm. Because investment is, again, function to disposable income. You mm -hmm. can't invest what you don't have. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it's, you, it's up to you as an investor or as a prospective investor mm -hmm. to keenly look across all markets we have in Kenya mm -hmm. and say, where can I invest? Instead of letting my money sit idly in a bank account, can I invest it in the money market? Mm -hmm. Can I invest my income in the, my 20% income in the mm -hmm. stock market? Mm -hmm. Can I invest it in fixed income? Mm -hmm. And that one now will bring us ba down to the different type of investment vehicles mm -hmm. we have in Kenya. All right. And who are they meant for? All right. We are going to be talking about the vehicles, the investment vehicles. But before we talk about investment vehicles, there's this thing uh, that is a curse to our youth right now. Yeah. And it, uh, it's called debt. Yeah. It has led to suicides in yeah. this country, if yeah. you've heard. And, uh, I'm told debt could be good. Debt could be the worst thing that you ever get into. Could be bad. All right. So uh, I'd like to get to the good side of debt. How can we use debt as a good thing? Debt is a good thing, mm -hmm. and at the same time, debt can be a bad thing. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at long-term affordable debt, mm -hmm. that is good. It's encouraged mm -hmm. to take long-term mm -hmm. affordable debt. Mm -hmm. So... When you see long-term debt, mm -hmm. the debt you're paying for two years, three years, four years, five years, and so forth, mm -hmm. it's good because the rate of return is low. Mm -hmm. The interest rate of return is low. Mm -hmm. However, when you look at short-term debt, mm -hmm. the debt you pay... Mobile apps. Mobile apps. <laughs> yes. Shylocks. Uh -huh. When you pay a debt within a period of two weeks, uh -huh. or one, one month, month uh -huh. two months, that's dangerous. The debt. interest is and insane. Normal, and normally the interest rate is so high uh -huh. to an extent that is not sustainable. All right. And therefore we discourage our young viewers uh -huh. and we discourage our young audience, our mm -hmm. young people who are crazing for these mobile lending apps mm -hmm. to go down, to slow down, mm -hmm. actually to stop mm -hmm. this mobile lending mm -hmm. uh, because it's so dangerous, because it's so expensive. Mm -hmm. Some of them are lending up to 20% per month, mm -hmm. which is not sustainable. Mm -hmm. Number two, because of the easy the availability of that loan mm -hmm. it's so easy for you to get that loan at mm -hmm. particu any particular moment as mm -hmm. long as you've paid one uh -huh. they give you an offer uh -huh. they, you know they increase your limits it goes, uh, so it becomes <laughs> dangerous uh -huh. and it puts the young people in what you call a borrowing cycle risk mm -hmm. so immediately after you're done with this one you're going for the next one immediately after you're done with the next one you go for another one so at the end of the year you found you find out that you've been borrowing mm -hmm all year long uh -huh. at 20% per month, which right. is not sustainable. It's very hard to wake up in the morning and uh, 
every headline on yeah. the newspaper is uh, the president signs for another debt yeah. or the deputy president uh, tra traveled to sort for a debt to finish such and such a project. So every headline in the newspaper is the government uh, borrowing. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to go back and not borrow as a person when your leader is constantly borrowing. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, how, how, what do you have to say about this? You cannot use government as a yardstick uh -huh. into your personal behavior when uh -huh. it comes to matters finance. Uh -huh. You know, governments have unlimited sources of revenue to pay uh -huh. their debts. Including in the yourself. Not, not, <laughs> not myself. <laughs> Including Remember government, the citizens yeah. themselves. Remember, uh -huh. yeah, because uh -huh. we pay taxes. Uh -huh. And government, you know, is at a position mm -hmm. to collect as much as possible from us through taxes. Mm -hmm. Government has other ways of getting grants from multilaterals mm -hmm. and even other bilateral relations, especially from other developed countries. Governments have different ways of raising capital through mm -hmm. it, uh, be it through government securities, those are treasury bills mm -hmm. and uh, treasury bonds where government has an opportunity to borrow domestically. So it's not fair for an individual and the, in that matter, a young person mm -hmm. to compare himself <laughs> to the government, to government, <laughs> because government has multiple ways, mm -hmm. has multi channels uh -huh. of collecting revenue mm -hmm. that can go a long way mm -hmm. into paying the debts. Not to mention other productive resources, mm -hmm. and like, not forgetting uh, these loans know, are long term. Yeah, not mm -hmm. to mention that all this money government is borrowing is mm -hmm. going towards infrastructure development. Mm -hmm. Those developments themselves can be able to self-sustain uh -huh. and pay most of these debts. All right, wonderful. Yeah. So uh, what I'm getting from you is uh, if you're going to get into debt, it better be long term. It better be for an investment. Exactly. All right. Let's get back to the options that we have uh, for investing because uh, I'm guessing most of our youth uh, un let's say an average of 30,000 30, for, yeah. for somebody who just graduated. Or even less. Or even less. Yeah. Uh, but uh, my friends who recently graduated, they tell me uh, the, the, the starting salaries are always somewhere around 30,000, uh, pre-tax, yeah. that is. Yeah. So this is somebody who's 20% 20, 20 is, uh, is going to be very little money yeah. after tax. Yeah, I remember my first job, I was earning 9,000. 9,000. 9, <laughs> that is a graduate from the Jobo Kedata University. Yeah, a graduate. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right. So what you normally encourage these uh, young graduates, some of them are jobless. Mm -hmm. uh, let's speak for those who are jobless as well. Mm -hmm. Some of them are earning so little. Mm -hmm. But uh, there are many ways in which you can invest. Mm -hmm. And the best investment vehicle for a young person, a mm -hmm. millennial, somebody with small income or low income or not even steady income, this month he has an income, next month he has no income. The best investment vehicle has always been the money market fund. Mm -hmm. And the advantage of investing in the money market fund is that it gives you an opportunity to invest as low as possible. Mm -hmm. For example, the Saiton Money Market Fund takes up to 100 shillings mm -hmm. minimum, you know, uh -huh. uh, starting investment amount. Okay. So you can even start with 100 bob uh -huh. and start making, uh, payments, you know, commit yourself payments. to making regular, be it regular or irregular, uh -huh. top-ups. Uh -huh. So that at the end of the year, you find yourself that you've disciplined yourself to an mm -hmm. extent that you have something substantial invested mm -hmm. at a very competitive rate. All right. So instead of you keeping your money in an M-Pesa account, mm -hmm. I'm not saying M-Pesa is bad. Mm -hmm. Or any mobile or money for that your matter. Money, sitting your money in a bank account or a mm -hmm. SACO account, instead invest this money in a money market account. If you're not going to spend it. If, if you're not you're planning to spend, to spend it. The so that this money can be able to come uh, handy uh -huh. whenever you have a rainy day because okay. remember money market funds are liquid investment mm -hmm. and what we mean by liquid investment we mean this money can easily be redeemable uh -huh. through withdrawing uh -huh. even using your phone all right and you can be able to make subsequent top-ups uh -huh. so you can be able to withdraw the whole amount including the interest and the principal you can still go back even if you withdraw everything doesn't mean that the account is closed mm -hmm. you can still go back make top-ups mm -hmm. you can still be able to make other top-ups mm -hmm. so it's more liquid investment mm -hmm. but at, at the same time it gives you the benefits of a pooled investment because all the money is going to sit in one ba bank mm -hmm. account and then it's going to be reinvested later by the assets uh, or the investment manager all right how long back does this money market uh, date is it is it a is it a fairly young thing or it's no been money market funds i mm -hmm. remember for example for the case study of the u.s mm -hmm. money market funds began way back in 1970s mm -hmm. So those are many years back. 
Those are many years Those back. Those are yeah. many years yeah. back. So, however, it's only that now the preference of mm -hmm. money market funds as short-term, low-risk, mm -hmm. and liquid investments mm -hmm. uh, is rising in Kenya right now. Mm -hmm. It's now that Kenyans are coming to the realization, especially the young people mm -hmm. who are always on social media, mm -hmm. they're coming to a realization that they can be able to invest their money in money market funds mm -hmm. and be able to reap the best, uh, the highest possible benefits in mm -hmm. terms of return and also enjoy the liquidity of withdrawing and topping up whenever they want. All right. We have young people that are blessed uh, to have parents who accumulated some wealth. Yeah. Uh, so they might be having some assets that they don't want to lose because uh, uh, they probably have some ties to the assets. Mm -hmm. uh, this could be land. This could be a building that was left by the parent. Uh, this could be a shop somewhere. Mm -hmm. oh, so what are some of the, 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 the best options for such a person uh, with the least risk? Uh, first of all, for someone who's keen to invest into real estate, mm -hmm. uh, we've always say that uh, there are many options in which you can uh, invest in real estate. Uh, the first one is you can be able to buy mm -hmm. and later sell. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, you buy a property and then you sell later. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you've participated in real estate mm -hmm. uh, through making you know a focus or targeting to earn from the capital appreciation of the property that you bought at a lower rate or at a lower price and then the capital the, uh, you know the property has appreciated with time mm -hmm. uh, in terms of capital appreciation and therefore you can resell it you can buy property and put up that property for rent mm -hmm. therefore you are earning Mm -hmm. what you call rental yield mm -hmm. and uh, a site on your keen on developing in places which have a highest you know rental yield therefore for a young person who's keen to invest in real estate you can be able to buy property mm -hmm. and later resell after the property has appreciated mm -hmm. or you've increased the value of the property by renovating and mm -hmm. refurbishing number two you can be able to buy property and now start you know, making a return of mm -hmm. earning your money back through what you call rental income, mm -hmm. therefore getting the best rental yield, assuming the property is in the best location. Mm -hmm. And number three, if you don't feel like you have the muscle mm -hmm. of committing into real estate by buying or building brick and mortar, mm -hmm. you can as well invest what you call the project notes or real estate notes. Mm -hmm. uh, what you mean by real estate, uh, real estate note is simply investing in some development somewhere which is being developed by an investment manager, mm -hmm. for example, Saiton, mm -hmm. and then by you investing money in, into this uh, development, the developer will be able to give you your return. Remember, mm -hmm. the developer is making some return uh -huh. through uh -huh. maybe the uh, property sales. Uh -huh. So as he enjoys his return, he'll be able to give you something as an proportionate investment. to your contribution into uh -huh. the development. To your investment. So that is what you call a real estate not uh -huh. yeah a real estate not not all right thank you very much i'll hold you that for a bit uh, remember we are on facebook at y251 we have a question right there the question is if you had a chance uh, to invest what which field would you invest in and why will be sampling your feedback towards the end of the show right about now i have mr michael from site on investments and is here to share with us some tips on financial literacy so uh yes as we move on uh, there's another thing uh, called uh, this pension yeah. Uh, pension has always been scandalous in, yeah. in this country. Yeah. And uh, so many people have shied away from, uh, f from it, considering the bad name it has had over time. Uh, what would you say about uh, young people saving for old age? Uh, saving for your old age is mm -hmm. a must. Mm -hmm. And uh, the sooner the better. Mm -hmm. Because the earlier you start, the more you'll have accumulated mm -hmm. by the time when you're going for retirement. It's true. All of us, we go for retirement at one point will all <coughs> grow old at one point mm -hmm. and the energy we have right now the energy you're exuding as youths right now mm -hmm. won't be there mm -hmm. therefore you won't be doing whatever you're doing right now mm -hmm. so it means it's good for a young person to come to a realization that one day he won't be having the energy he won't be having all that uh, you know muscle to be mm -hmm. doing whatever he's doing currently to earn a living. So at this point, uh, it's evident and mm -hmm. that has it that old age mm -hmm. comes with its own shares of challenges mm -hmm. in terms of terminal illnesses, mm -hmm. in terms of loss of energy, mm -hmm. loss of loved ones, mm -hmm. uh, loss of whoever was caring for you, loss of finances, mm -hmm. and so forth. Therefore, it's prudent for a young person 
uh, to start saving for retirement as early as possible. And government has been in the forefront in terms mm -hmm. of coming up with the legislation, in terms of policy mm -hmm. uh, that is going to guide on how one is going to save for retirement. And the options are out there, mm -hmm. glaring, and the pension providers are out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, us, like Saiton Investments, mm -hmm. we have a very strong pension uh, scheme mm -hmm. uh, targeting young people mm -hmm. who are keen to invest as low as possible mm -hmm. towards their Retirement. Towards their retirement. And re remember, the moment you start saving for your retirement, you cannot be able to access these funds mm -hmm. until you've reached the, uh, the earliest age of retirement. The earliest which age is of retirement. Years. Which is 50 years. Yeah. All right, I will take you back to the 20% we were talking yeah. about, the 80 20 rule. Yeah. So 20%, uh, I'm thinking of a middle class Kenyan, 20% yeah. uh, uh, for investment. For retirement, <laughs> yeah. for paying uh, the debts, mm -hmm. uh, inherited debts and your own debt as well. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking this 20%. Uh, is there a way one can come up with a plan, uh, say a uh, yearly plan or a five-year plan or a 10-year plan uh, to, to diversify this kind of saving? Because I'm thinking 20% is not going to be enough mm -hmm. to take a portion for, for investing, pension and, and paying for debt. That's a good <laughs> question, Barry. Uh -huh. And uh, what you normally say, actually the rate ratio is 50, 30, 20. Mm -hmm. However, the 30 is for once, uh -huh. whereas 50 is for the needs and obligations. Mm -hmm. Now, the remaining 20 is what you're putting aside to pay debt mm -hmm. and also commit it to, into, into investments. Now, because you have 30% for once, mm -hmm. They're not things you necessarily need. They're things you don't necessarily need. Uh -huh. Therefore, it's up to you. It's up you know, at your disposal uh -huh. to think how can I cut down on my wants uh -huh. so that I can as well supplement. So it's all about sacrifice it's when it about comes sacrifice. to finances. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. So it's about sacrifice. Uh -huh. So you can say, let me sacrifice my wants uh -huh. and instead complement my, you know, my savings and investments uh -huh. and also complement my needs and obligations. Mm -hmm. So it's up to, you know, it's up to you mm -hmm. to see how, what amount are you going to sacrifice in terms of your wants mm -hmm. so that at least you can be able to complement right. you know, your needs and uh, also your savings in terms of investments. All right. Another, this one is a, is a personal question. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry for putting you on the spot. Yeah. Do you go for holidays yourself? Yeah, I should. You do go for sure holidays. Do. do you save for the holidays? Currently, I'm saving for my Easter holidays. You're saving for your Easter yeah. holidays. All right. So uh, I'd like to know, out of all these things, what is the importance of uh, just having some time for yourself? Uh, just organize some small holiday for yourself as you work hard towards your uh, financial goals. What is the importance of that part of life? It is very important. Mm -hmm. But you see, again, the Kenyan youth have been able to, you know, exaggerate this, you know, this mm -hmm. point, this whole point of, uh, you know, you know, being there for yourself and trying to enjoy as little mm -hmm. into making it monthly or even weekly <laughs> affairs, whereby uh, someone can, on Friday, someone straight walks out of the office uh -huh. and straight goes into a bar uh -huh. to spend and saying, oh, the day, the <laughs> week has been long. Uh -huh. Only for him to realize now he's eating into the 50% uh -huh. and he's eating also into the uh, into the 20%. Uh -huh. So it's up to your personal discipline as mm -hmm. well. It's good for you to remain disciplined mm -hmm. and say, whereas, yeah, it's good for me to go for, you know, vacation. It's good for me to go for a small holiday mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, have a good rest. Uh -huh. But remember, you still have to commit 50% into paying your <laughs> obligations uh -huh. and needs. Uh -huh. You still have to commit 30% into your wants. Mm -hmm. And you still have to commit 20% right. or even more into right. your investments. Or even more, if yeah. possible. Investment, investment, investment is the word of the day. Yeah. Yes. So remember, we have a question on our Facebook. Uh, if you had a chance, which field would you uh, prefer investing in and why? Tell us on our Facebook. We'll be sampling your feedback towards the end of the show. And... Uh, we like that part for sure. All right. So uh, I'd like to <clears throat> to get to, to know, since you have experience in this world, what are some of the the places apart from apart from this uh, money market that Kenyan youth can invest in? Okay. We also have uh, because you're talking youth. You're talking yeah. to young people. Young people. People still well, have accumulated life in front wealth. Of them. Yet. Uh -huh. Yeah. Therefore, like I said, it's still the prerogative of this young person. Uh -huh to sit or to sit down and think about where to invest the money mm -hmm. to seek investment advisory mm -hmm. and site on investment uh, comes in handy when it comes to seeking investment advisory mm -hmm. and we you know we advise the Kenyan youth mm -hmm. uh, across board 
on different uh, investment classes where they can be able to commit their funds, ranging from money markets, whereby they can start a small with as low as 100 Kenya shillings and keep on making top-ups through their mobile phone uh -huh. they are into growing their portfolio. Uh -huh. Number two, they can still be able to invest in government securities. You're talking about um, investing in treasury bills uh -huh. and treasury bonds. Uh -huh. You see the other day the Central Bank of Kenya came up with a platform uh, that is going to help retail investors, young investors mm -hmm. who are not able to invest a lot of money into the treasury bills and mm -hmm. bonds, they can be able to invest, uh, you know, in the treasury bills and bonds with amounts below 140,000 mm -hmm. into these platforms using their mobile phones. Mm -hmm. Therefore, that's another good sign and Kenyan youth need to be aware about these new developments, especially when it comes to purchasing government securities and uh, treasury bills and bonds. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, there's a perception that governments don't default. Mm -hmm. And it's advisable for you to invest in government securities. Mm -hmm. If you feel like uh, money markets are not enough, mm -hmm. you can be able to invest into this platform direct. Right. And other than that, you also have other fixed income uh, uh, ventures whereby you can still be able to commit your money mm -hmm. at a longer period of time, still be able to get a good return which is, uh, you know, which is guaranteed, mm -hmm. and you're talking about things like fixed deposits, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, fixed income products being offered by, you know, fund managers like mm -hmm. Cyton Investments. Uh, you're looking at, um, you know, other opportunities in pension as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Wonderful. Uh, so uh, we have been talking about somebody who is at least earning some money, who is mm -hmm. able to set aside money to save and invest. On the flip side, we have somebody with an idea without cash whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are some of the options this person has uh, to get investors to invest in their ideas? Now, we are talking about somebody who has a good idea. Mm -hmm but uh, he has a capital shortage yes, exactly. or he has no access to finance. So what you normally advise our youth is that to create a good credit worthiness. Mm -hmm. It's good you create a good credit book. Mm -hmm. So by you creating a, a good uh, credit book, it means you can walk into any banking hall uh -huh. and be able to ask for a loan. Uh -huh. And through this SME loan, you can be able to finance your uh, business operations and then this will lead into profitability. Mm -hmm. So it's good for a young person to know the importance of having a good credit record. Mm -hmm. And uh, remember the mobile, app le uh, the mobile lending apps uh -huh. are not really helping in that side. <laughs> because they're making sure right. that they're going to list you, you know, uh -huh. in those uh, credit and worthiness books. Uh -huh. And uh, when, you're, when you have that idea, a good idea, you're walking into a banking hall mm -hmm. only for the relationship manager to tell you that your, uh, you know, your credit books are not good. Because uh -huh. of a uh, thousand shillings, because of, of, of two thousand. A few coins you borrowed uh -huh. overnight and uh, a few years back. Uh -huh. So it's good for the young people uh -huh. to know the importance of a good credit record. Mm -hmm. Therefore, this will come in handy mm -hmm. when you want that small loan mm -hmm. to boost your small business mm -hmm. idea. So your credit record is very important. It's very crucial. Uh, investment beats uh, saving any day. Yeah. And uh, what else did we learn today? <laughs> it's also good to take a break. It's also good to take a break. <laughs> that is very important right there. Yeah. And thank you very much for coming thank through. You, thank I'll you. give you another chance to share with them your contact details yeah. just in case they need some financial advice. Thanks, buddy. Mm -hmm. Your camera is number four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Michael Obaga, like uh -huh. I said, and my phone number is 0723 204087. Right. Therefore, you can be able to reach me on this line mm -hmm. anytime and be able to seek any financial advisory, especially when it comes to matters investment. All right. Thank you. I'm looking forward to having you again. I call this lesson one on our financial literacy Thanks, class. Buddy. Thanks, buddy. All right. For having me. Yes, you have come to the end of this particular segment. And remember, we are going to be sampling your feedback uh, on Facebook towards the end of the show. And uh, this is that towards the end of the show right there. So keep them coming. Keep them coming. My name is Barry Moses, or it's Barry Moses on social media. We are going to have a short break. Then we'll be back with you guys.